Hello fellow treasure hunters, welcome back, we have been digging for the truth for a very long time now, alas, the hunt for the location of the treasures surrounding Oak Island, and our quest thereof, may be coming to an end. However there is no need to threat. This end like the death of the phoenix, is the birth of a new quest, one of equal importance. We are yet to fall at the many hurdles that some are willing to continue on with, the wild goose chases that have devoured the wealths of many, as many of you are probably aware of by now, I have never been reluctant to admit when I have been fooled, I feel no losses in accepting defeat, to change direction if the trail runs cold, or due to being tricked into a dead end, on the contrary, the pursuit for the treasure, and the covering of its tracks fill me with intrigue, a driver curiosity to uncover the truth of these deceptions. I have now all but proven the pit to be nothing more than an elaborate ruse, set out to conceal an absent bounty, a deception guarded by the forces of the sea. Snares have lay at every turn, waiting to cast you into a pit of doubt and confusion, a mountain of fiction laying in wait. However, I have trudged these murky trenches, I have seeked but one thing, evidence for the truth. Verifiable links to the past, evidences of man's influences on the island, not with an eye for digging, but to seek what was hidden, how, and who could have hidden it. If you have been watching my videos to this point you will know that we pinpointed our candidate for the treasure, the Knights Templar, I have catalogued substantial evidences showing them to be the only likely candidate for the island. This collaborated with detailed artifacts dating pre-1795, motive, ability, knowledge, and most importantly the treasure to hide. But what I will do now is finish the task, the thing we have all been waiting to discover, what did they hide? And the most valuable question of all, where they hid it. We can all see on the curse of Oak Island, the hunt for the hidden chamber beneath the money pit. This ritualistic hunt for a chamber, can be dated back to the original hiders of the treasures, predating the Knights Templar, the most valuable prize of the Israelites, lay under a place known as the Temple Mount. It is the place the Knights Templars took as their names, why name yourself after the ruins of an old temple in Jerusalem? What could they have found that would be so important to them? Well not only are there rumors, but also strong evidences to suggest that these knights found a secret chamber beneath the Temple Mount, one they had searched for and knew the location of before they dug for it. Within it lay the Ark of the Covenant, and the Holy Grail. On the exterior of Charter's Cathedral, by the north door, there is a carving on a pillar, which gives us an indication of the object sought by the burrowing Templars, representing the Ark of the Covenant, but in a rather strange context. The Ark is depicted as being transported on a wheeled vehicle, Evidence suggests that the Ark of the Covenant had been secreted deep beneath the temple in Jerusalem centuries before the fall of the city to the Romans. It had been hidden there to protect it from yet another invading army who had laid the city to waste. Hugh de Payen, one of the original nine Templar knights, had been chosen to lead the expedition mounted to locate the Ark and bring it back to Europe. Persistent legends recount that the Ark was then hidden for a considerable time deep beneath the crypt of Charter's Cathedral. 
The same legends also claim that the Templars found many other sacred artifacts from the old Jewish temple in the course of their investigations and that a considerable quantity of documentation was also located during the dig. A reasonable consensus is emerging that they contain scriptural scrolls, treatises on sacred geometry, and details of certain sacred knowledge of art science and the hidden wisdom of the ancient initiates of the Judaic tradition. The Copper Scroll, which was unrolled and deciphered at Manchester University under the guidance of John Allegro, was a list of all the burial sites used to hide the various items both sacred and profane described as the treasure of the Temple of Jerusalem. Many of these sites have been re-excavated since the discovery of the Copper Scroll, and several of them have disclosed not temple treasure but evidence of Templar excavation made in the 12th century. After their excavations were completed at the Temple Mount, the Knights returned to their native lands. Two of them ventured to Rosslyn, Scotland, where they set up the Templar headquarters. They had clearly recovered something which brought them great influences and wealth. Shortly afterwards, the Knights were given the official seal of the Roman Catholic Church, and their numbers swelled as wealthy landowners and aristocrats joined their ranks. The Templars went on a binge of temple construction and brought back many sciences, such as astronomy. Their order grew in stature, wealth and power quickly, and they won battle after battle against the Muslims during the various Crusades. The Templars apparently became a threat to the Church itself. The Pope and the King of France, Philip le Bel (1268–1314), plotted to undermine the order and seize their considerable treasures in France. On Friday, October 13, 1307, the King's men moved against the Knights and arrested many of them. This is also why Friday the 13th is now considered unlucky. Although the papal conspiracy with King Philip succeeded in obtaining various confessions under torture and a considerable sum of Templar wealth, the conspirators never found the ultimate Templar treasure itself, which by now had been secreted away to Scotland. Even so, most of the order was wiped out in the raids. The leader, Jacques de Molay, was burned at the stake, and its members scattered across Europe. On March 22, 1312, the church officially dissolved the order by papal bull. This date also subsequently became significant, in not only the Nazi movement in Germany but also was another recurring NASA ritual date. Whatever ancient relics and treasures the Templars held from their Jerusalem and other Holy Land excavations, they were from this moment on secreted away beneath Rosslyn Chapel in Scotland, in much the same way these same artifacts were once buried under the Temple Mount itself. The chapel itself bears no resemblance to a Christian structure, as many experts who have surveyed it have verified. Remarkably, it is laid out along the same architectural lines as the biblical dimensions given for the original Solomon's Temple. However, the Templars namely Henry Sinclair would travel to Nova Scotia, where he would create the New Scotland, or Grail Castle, it is claimed Canada became a settlement through this voyage, this trip was to create a hiding place for treasure, if ever needed due to mutiny. Henry claimed he had built a special Grail Castle on the island of Oak, called the Cross, this was the final clue needed in unlocking the treasure map, I find it astonishing that I may have actually tracked the treasure down, by solving the Templar clues, I feel I have successfully followed the Rosaline, to Rosaline. It seems others found out about the ruse before me. The mutiny by the Crown of England, was a double cross, believing the treasures were hidden in Nova Scotia, all the while, they never left Scottish soil, I now believe the money pit to have never been used to hide treasure, but was built for the purpose. Oak Island was never actually called, Oak Island, it is actually called the Island of Oak, this was a cunning shout out to the builders of the pit and its traps, the oak layers were also for this purpose, they were not to stop the pit from collapsing as how would you get out? Around the 16th to 17th centuries, and even before then, only one place on earth could be attributed to that name, the Island of Oak, and that would have been England. Some would say that England was built on oak. The Christmas Yule log was originally an oak log decorated with mistletoe and holly. They carried acorns for good luck, and to ward off illness. In the 1700s oak trees were in high demand by shipbuilders, and were grown especially for the purpose. In fact every ship commissioned by Drake and Nelson used up the wood from around 2500 trees. Templars were smart enough to build a triangulation tower on the coast of Scotland, this tower lines up directly with Rosalind Chapel, this alignment was first noticed by YouTube user CFAP7865, the Oak Island cross discovered by Fred Nolan was key to confirming the link between Rosalind and the island of Oak, the maritime mapping technique used to create the cross pinpoints the tower, the maritime technique used was a clue to overseas voyage. 
The Golden Scroll shows evidence of them linking treasures together with coded mapping techniques, which I suspect would have been the cross's purpose. Henry Sinclair's mention of the cross, and also the building of a grail castle, is very strong evidence to suggest they had indeed created a secondary hiding place for the relics. The most important clues discovered are the Masonic Confession, Nolan's Cross on the Island, and the old maritime map with the mapping technique that links to the cross. The maritime cross mapping technique was crucial in solving the puzzle. The stone cross, lines up with the Templar Tower exactly, this tower leads you to Rosalyn. All roads have led to Rosslyn, when the church officially dissolved the Order of the Knights Templar by Papal Bull on March 22, 1312, surviving German members formed the Teutonic Knights, and the Scottish members went underground, only to eventually re-emerge as the Freemasons. This fragment of information, the transformation of the Knights to the Masons, was the key in unlocking their ultimate deceit, the Money Pit. If you haven't already please go back and watch my previous videos, the connection of the Masons to the treasure hunt that I have already uncovered, really has pulled the curtain back on their game, the Oak Island treasure hunt has become the most expensive treasure hunt of all time, but you may come to ask where did all that money go? It went to the Masonic companies built up around the island since the Holler's discovery, or I believe its construction. Freemasons love to leave clues, they also love to fool you out of money. All of this time the island has pointed at the location of the treasure, and all this time Freemasons have profited from fruitless endeavors to unravel their traps, Denver Airport and the Georgia Guide Stones to name but a few, are prime examples of these guys laying out clues to their deeds. Once all of these things began to slot into place, the geology of the island, the Templars history, the Masons deceit, the decoys, the confessions, and the historical data, I began to worry that my efforts, for the past few years, along with others, had indeed been led down a giant flooded, Nova Scotian rabbit hole. In the 16th century, the Sinclairs of Roslyn were close advisors to the Scottish kings, and thus to Marie de Guise, the French regent. In 1546, Marie de Guise wrote one of her letters to William Sinclair. The letter included this remarkable passage, likewise that we shall be loyal and a true mistress to him, his counsel and the secret shown to us, which we shall keep secret. In 1556, she sent William Sinclair to France, to find more support for her daughter, Mary, Queen of Scots. It underlines the close relationship Marie de Guise and the Sinclairs had in the defense of the Scottish monarchy, a cause which was always close to the heart of the Sinclairs. The question is what the secret was, rather than Sinclair pledging his loyalty to the Queen Regent, it is the Queen Regent saying she will obey the Sinclairs and not betray him. Of interest is Barul's reference to a Scottish Templar and Masonic connection. Barul wrote in 1797, that the Templars had discovered three stones in Temple of Solomon, one of which carried the name of God. He argued that the three stones were secretly moved to Scotland after the Templars' dissolution in 1312. The Knights of the Temple made them the foundation for their lodge. Their successors, heirs of the secret, are currently the perfect masters of Freemasonry, the High Priests of Jehovah. Abbe Augustin Barul, February 10, 1741, May 10, 1820, was a Jesuit priest mostly known for creating and revealing the Knights Templars, the Bavarian Illuminati and the Jacobinians in his book Memoirs illustrating the history of Jacobinism. The three stones were a slab carrying the name of God, a cover stone which gave access to a hidden room and which displayed a four-headed cherub. The third stone was a square, white stone on which the Ark of the Covenant had originally been placed. It opened the way for books such as the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. Several Sinclairs have been buried inside the Abbey at Rosalyn. At least seven of the stones in the floor of Holyrood Abbey are memorials to Sinclairs, although most of them date from the 18th and 19th century. The Sinclairs were the keepers of the Order of the Knights Templar, and all of the secrets surrounding Oak Island I have uncovered and so far, also Rosalind. The Knights Templar first came to Scotland in 1128 during the reign of King David I, whom Hughes de Payens visited as part of his international recruitment drive. The Payens made a very favorable impression on King David, to the extent that he later surrounded himself by Templars and appointed them as the guardians of his morals by day and night. As a result of this royal favor, through gifts from both the king and his court, the Templars acquired a substantial property holding in Scotland. When the Templars were rounded up in France in 1307, Scotland itself I have discovered, was actually not affected. I now suspect the money pit to be nothing more than a trap for anyone seeking to profit from the Templars' wealth. 
it is also still a source of profit for those in the know, I am also willing to state that while the crown was hunting the Templars to extinction, not only did they survive, but they still possess their treasures, as the Masons appeared to infiltrate the order for the crown, the opposite occurred, the true treasures never left Scotland, and the crown of England ended up in the hands of Freemasonry. All those involved with the digging of the Oak Island trick, may have believed they were indeed hiding the Grail and the Ark, they may have believed this is what they were digging, but after it was not needed, the Masons decided to test out their own skills on the world, and make a hefty profit while doing so. In the next segment we will be pressing on for the whereabouts of the Oak Island treasure, looking at all other clues surrounding the curse, and delving into the relics left behind by the Templars during the new chapter of our quest. As always, thanks for watching.